Uh, yeah, please, Friedrich, whenever you're ready. Yeah. Okay, so I, I will normally go. Okay, um, <clears throat> then, yeah, so then let me make a brief recollection of what happened last time. <laughs> Just summarize in a few lines. So, sorry, cool. So we were studying current algebra rates. So you, <laughs> so you all know what that is. Uh, and then we equipped it, we put put on some more structures. So there were there were basically two two pieces of data. There was a generalized metric. Which for the purpose of the talk was just a sum bundle or some specific form, like positive definite such that complement is negative definite, but this can be relaxed. And the other bit was was the divergence operator. So this was a map from gamma e to section, sorry, to functions on the base. And the most important class of divergences actually arise if you if you start with a with a density or volume form, or or maybe now it's best with the view of what is going to happen is say to have a half density. So I will say that sigma is a half density. I will say that it's a, it's a everywhere non-zero half density, and because I don't want to repeat that that phrase, I will just call it H. So th this is a space of uh, space of everywhere non-vanishing half densities. Then. Densities. And incidentally, it, H is a good name because they because they form a Hilbert space. So if you multiply two half densities, you get a density, and you can integrate it over the manifold, and you get a, a nice inner product in this way. Um, okay. So and yeah, and then, then this thing induces a divergence simply by saying that like you have the divergence subscript sigma. Let's say okay. Let me describe this arrow. Um, so divergence subscript sigma on some section A will be given simply by lead derivative of the corresponding vector with respect to the corresponding vector field of the sigma and then times sigma minus one. So then you get a function. And physically these things, let me just go back to remember what I, I used, which color I used for physics, I used the red one. So, so, so this is this is the stuff that physically encodes the two fields from supergravities, like the, the metric field, the graviton, and this this three form field, the closed three form. And this divergence is something that serves as a replacement for the dilaton field. And so, what I want to do today, I will first I will do some some something else relating some general current algebra constructions and Poisson linear duality. But then I will briefly talk about adding a different field which appears in the context of type 2 supergravity. Um, but yeah, so so for with these things, just, just to put a brief summary of what was of what, what we constructed out of this data was that you can so if, if you now say curly M is a space of possible generalized metrics. Uh, B pluses, space of B pluses, then then uh, Fixing the divergence, we get a vector field. So this generalized Ricci tensor can be seen as a vector field on, let's say, is a vector field on this infinite dimensional module, well, this space of generalized metrics. And uh, yeah, and then apart from this generalized Ricci, you can construct some. Sort of Laplace operator, which was actually which was acting on on half densities, so on this H precisely. And out of this, you could create either a function, function on M, so functional of whatever of generalized metrics, so function depending on generalized metrics and non and this sigma. And that one was given simply by by taking sigma Laplace sigma, integrating over M and Maybe some minus sign, and this thing is a gradient. Sorry, this this thing seen as a function for for a fixed sigma. If you see this as a function on M, 
then this then gradient of this function will be the generalized Ricci. So generalized Ricci is a gradient flow with this, for this for this function. And second thing that you can do, you can define a, uh, a scalar curvature, which will depend on V plus and sigma. So this Laplacian only depends on V plus, but this thing depends on both. And that one is simply the other thing that you can do. Just this is a function. And uh, what I didn't think about, what I didn't, sorry, what I didn't talk about last time, but what I can mention just in passing maybe is that there is a way to naturally enhance this thing because this, this generalized Ricci, it can be defined for arbitrary divergence. It doesn't need to have a half density. Like half densities in particular induce a divergence, but not the other way. Sorry, uh, but, but there is more divergences than, 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 than half densities. There is there is a, there is divergences which don't come from the half densities, but nevertheless there is a way to to extend this definition slightly. But I don't want to talk about it because it's it's kind of not that important for us. But there is a way to to extend this to an arbitrary divergence. Uh, in a say by this extension I mean that if you take a divergence which comes from this from from a half density, then it will recover this previous one. But, but it, for some purposes, it's better to have to have to have it depend on an arbitrary divergence because then you can write the the, st the string background equations. Let's say okay, the color, let's say this one. So then, having these objects, now you can say that the generalized Ricci. Hopefully, this is visible for V plus and div. It's a terrible color. Okay, well, I will put a different color. Let's say this one. Okay. This, this thing is zero, and this uh, scalar curvature being zero. So if you, you can call these things string background equations, background equations. And the reason for that is that in, in, in part, so this, this is defined for an arbitrary Courant algebra, but there are some special cases. So for instance, if you take exact Courant algebraids, so if E is exact and divergence actually counts from some half density, then these are the string background equations for the for the bosonic string. So this, this, this then corresponds to the bosonic string. The bosonic string needs to propagate in a background which satisfies these equations. Um, if you if you do if you take E to be transitive. And say again, this divergence comes from this one. And generalized metric has to have some proper, it has to have some right projection properties and the right rank, but we're not very dead. And then this, this corresponds to the heterotic string. So for this, you can see more in uh, Mario's work. And, uh, and then there is another thing which, which happens, for instance, in the, in the first case, when you don't, you still keep exactness. But you don't require this to come from a half density, but you take it to be just this more general notion that we discussed last time of being compatible with V plus. So div compatible with V plus. Then this corresponds to what is called uh, modified or generalized supergravity equations. Modified generalized supergravity equations. And last time I, I put the names, I attached the names Cyclin and Wolf to that, but I, I now I realize that probably it's better to put like, if I want to put some references here, then I think a pro, more proper would be how you know, Prolo, uh, Benhauer, Roy Van Cyclin. So these guys not noticed. So from what I understand, they noticed that this well stud well known. There is a well known geometry called the ADS five crosses five, and if they studied what is called an eta deformation of that, then they noticed that while for some purposes it looks like a valid string background, namely it has some specific Kappa symmetry, whatever. Um, sorry. Then uh, anyway, they they study this 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 background and they notice that it doesn't satisfy the ordinary equations, but it only satisfies these generalized ones. And then Cyclin and Wolf uh, that I mentioned last time, I think they proved that 
that this is the that that having a background satisfying this equation is the same as having a string sig sorry having a is equal to the property that when we have a string moving there then the action has a couple symmetry so some yeah yeah in, in any case uh yeah, you recover these these things, and what I want to talk in a moment will be will be how to how to how to do the same thing with for type two supergravity, which is another of incarnation of string theory, and that one will basically correspond to having non-zero here, but something some some expression proportional schematically to some fields f f squared, f f is some field that I will talk about in a moment, but before that, let me let me let me let me. Is the, mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes, so, yes, please. The uh, operator delta B plus, is it self adjoint in, in any natural sense? Uh, I, I, I think yes. So I think if, I, if, I, if I do the integral of sigma prime delta, I just, I wonder if you, if instead of taking variations with respect to B plus, you fix B plus and take variations with respect to sigma, does this give you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, so, uh, this one, yeah. Uh, so if, if, if you do if you do this thing, yeah, yeah. then if, if you vary sigma by, by adding some some lambda to it, then the variation will, will look like this. I, I, I think it is self adjoint. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. if this formula is true, then it's self adjoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. It should be. Um, um, okay, so let me now talk about something that I will call Poisson Lady Duality. But which will basically correspond to some interesting or, or some, some constructions on current algebras. So for a moment, let's forget about generalized metric divergences and Ricci tensors and everything and just just let's just talk about bre about bare current algebra. Right? So nothing else, just 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 current algebra. Right? And so then one construction that you can do with it is called pullback, or we call it pullback. Maybe there is a different notion that you can do. Uh, so let me let me take a definition of that. Uh, so so suppose so let E over M be a current algebra. Right? Any and let and, and let f be a map in uh, from m prime to the to m so to, to the base of this thing and let's suppose for simplicity that it, that it is a surjective submersion this doesn't have to be true but let's suppose it so sorry so surjective submersion Um, right, and then then you can say that um, a current algebra is pullback uh, of E, maybe along the F, is a current algebra structure on a, on the pullback vector bundle. So it's it's a current algebra structure on. Uh, Let's look at E prime. So this will be just a pullback vector bundle, seen as a vector bundle over M prime. So we want to have a current algebra structure there such that we will get some natural compatibility conditions. So so such that, such that the two, two structures are compatible. And there, and there is not much that you can do. You can um, they can require the obvious things. So for instance, if you, if you take two sections A and B, for all A and B sections of the original one. Uh, if you if you if you pull them back and then take a bracket, so I will denote it with a prime to to signify to signify that this is a bracket on E prime. And this thing will be you want this to be the pullback of the bracket. That's kind of natural to require. You want the same for pairing. So now we are pulling it back as a function. The function and the most interesting, perhaps, is the anchor thing. So, if you pull back a section, 
So now it's a section of E prime, and then you take the anchor map. So now it's some vector field on M prime. So now you can push it forward to F, sorry, to the other one. And you want that this thing is, first of all, a projectable vector field project. You can, you can project it and it will be equal to rho of A. And so, okay, so, so this is a like relatively natural definition. The, the subtle point about this, this concept is that the, this is not, that it's a choice. So you need to choose this structure. So it's not, it's not that like if you would have a, a, a just any current algebra and any such map, it would give you a pullback. It might be that there is no pullback and it might be that there is many different pullbacks. And, but, but basically they all, they all differ in the choice of the anchor map. So, so basically, let's maybe remark. Uh, so it's determined. So the, uh, okay. Uh, so this is determined simply by the. I mean, if if you if you know what the anchor map is, then you know everything else because if you want, you know, like if you because because the e prime is a vector bundle is a pullback of e. It also it means that the fibers there can be identified with, with fibers there. So, for instance, this the second condition fixes you, what, what fixes what has to be the inner product on E prime. So there is no choice in that. And similarly, the bracket is fixed by this condition. And then using the axioms of the current algebra, then you can show that, you know, any any locally any section can be expressed as a linear combination with some function depending coefficients of sections which are pulled back. So so this thing, so having a row prime. And I mean, in having this thing, having a current algebra, with a map, and having a row prime determines the current algebra pullback uniquely if it exists. Um, okay, so is of an Ellisman connection or something like this, right? Um, may uh, well, in case in case that your submersion is a vibration. Might be, yeah, might be. Sorry, I, I never really thought about this in, in, in more detail. I always just use it in, a, in some. Uh, yeah, you, you might be right. So, you so, think so, of the freedom that you have on, on row prime to satisfy this formula essentially something that is an endomorphism, an homomorphism from the pullback of the tangent downstairs to the, to the vertical vector one. This is uh, a connection. So, so, so I, I, I can show you the, 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 the so that there has been a work of Meinerenken and Liebland and they, they classify these things. So they say that we have a theorem in the paper that, I mean, sorry, not, uh, not a theorem. After the definition, we have a remark, which, which, which says that, um, you know, these, these, have, these are the conditions, these are the three conditions that you need to have for, for a row prime. Okay. So it, yeah, it, it needs to be some vector bundle map and, uh, it satisfies something. I don't know. Maybe you can translate this into some connection like conditions. Okay. I don't know. Sorry. Um, so. Right. Okay. So, so now an example of this, you know, the most important one, the most widely studied one in, in Poisson Lithuanity is that if you suppose that you start with, with something that's called a Manion pair. So this thing, a Manion pair. Which is just a fancy way of saying that it's a that that this means that G is a quadratic Lie algebra. So G is a Lie algebra with a, with a, with an invariant inner product. So G is a quadratic Lie algebra. In other words, it's a current algebra over a point. And H is a Lagrangian subalgebra. Lagrangian means that it's Lagrangian subalgebra. Lagrangian means that it's half dimensional and it's isotropic. So if you take H, H in a product and it's zero, and also that dimension of H is precisely one half dimension of G. Okay, so so much for the explanation. So uh, yeah, uh, so this, so this is this is called Manin pair, and if you have such a thing, then then you can. Then you can create such a pullback. So first of all, you take as your as this original current algebra. You can take this Lie algebra itself. So you can take G, seen as a, a as a vector bundle over a point that is a current algebra, because it has a pairing, invariant pairing. 
And now is the other thing, as this M prime, so I want to have a map from some manifold M prime. So as M prime, I take the quotient space of G mod H, where G and H are groups integrating these Lie algebras. So suppose that you take, suppose that you, that, that there, this H is closed and whatever, like some nice conditions are satisfied, then this thing is a nice, nice manifold. And obviously it has a map to a point, so you can pull, pull back the, the, this vector bundle, in this case, just a vector space, and you get this kind of silly, silly looking, uh, silly looking uh, vector bundle because it's just a product. But you can show that this thing will always be a current algebraic with the anchor. So now it's enough actually to specify the anchor map. So now the anchor map uh, so row will be given just by the action of Lie algebra G on this quotient space. So now that since this is a right quotient, then it still carries the, the, the left action of the, of the group G. And if you take the infinitesimal version of that, then you get an action of a Lie algebra on this manifold. But action of a Lie algebra is that's not nothing else than to say that you have a map, map from G to the vector fields on that manifold. And if you yeah, and if you think about it, this this is the same as saying that you have a you have a vector bundle map from G times G mod H to T or G mod H, which is precisely what the anchor map should be. So yeah, so in other words, you can uh, yeah the claim is that this this gives you a well defined current algebra with this with this anchor map, but moreover it has it has it now it has a beautiful property that it is actually exact. And the reason for that is that if you remember what what definition of exactness is, it's exact current algebra is exact if the associated sequence is exact. And if and so 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 in other words, exact so current algebra is exact if and only if uh, because this second map is the anchor map. So the anchor anchor map is surjective. Which is definitely the case here because we have the action of the fully algebra G acting on this. This is a, this is a surjective. This is a transitive action, so the anchor map is surjective. And the second condition is that the what is it, the the rank of E has to be twice the dimension of M. You can show that this is if and only if. It's kind of simple. It's, it's a very it's, so it's very simple to spot an exact current algebra. Surjectivity will say that. That sorry that you have a you have exactness in here, exactness in here follows automatically because this map is a trans transpose of that first map, and exactness in the middle will be just this this condition on the ranks, and if you look that look look here then that's precisely the case that we have the dimension of H is the half dimension of G which which precisely translates to this condition that the rank of this bundle is twice the dimension of the base so this is exact that's the upshot that you you get a nice exact so this is in fact exact. So on if you have left in, I mean, sections of this quarter algebra which are invariant under the action of G, I guess the bracket is just the bracket on the Lie algebra. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, yeah, I should have said that. Yeah. So, so more more concretely, yeah, yeah, or, uh, yeah. That's actually a good point. So, yeah. So what what, the, what all of this. Uh, complicated definition says is that on this thing, there is a natural current algebra structure such that if you take brackets of two constant sections, then that will reproduce the bracket of G because constant sections can be identified with just elements of G and constant sections of this thing are just elements of G, of the algebra G. And uh, yeah, and the bracket there will be identified with the, with the bracket on G itself. And if you are interested in... Hmm? No, so where do you use the fact that you take H to be Lagrangian? Uh, yes, you mean yeah. So the half dimensionality is in here, and the other the other thing is needed in in for, for this to be to be a, a current algebra actually. So so the uh, so something so it, it, more generally, it's enough to assume that it's coisotropic that the subalgebra is coisotropic. Uh, in that case, it would give you a good good thing, but it will be just a transitive current algebra. And in exact in Lagrangian case, it gives you exact. But but you cannot. Um, yeah, that, that 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 is something that you really need in order that. Um, let me see. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, I mean one one of the axioms will break down, and you 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 need the 
I think it's the, the for, for the Jacobi identity, you need, you need, if I remember correctly, you need the coisotropy condition. That's, that's, that's what I remember. Maybe I remember wrong, but yeah, it, 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 more generally, you can relax this Lagrangian unit, you, you can assume that it's just quite tropic. I don't know, does, does, does it answer your, your question? Yeah, yeah, I don't know where. Uh, I doubt it's for the Jacobi identity, but uh, yeah, because I mean, the Jacobi identity should follow from the fact that it, it is true. Uh, you, uh, yes. So, so, so okay. So, so I, I, what I can tell you is the following. So, so um, it's, it's true that Jacobi for constant sections will follow from the fact that there is a Jacobi on 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 the thing here. But the problem is in extending it to non-constant sections. And so, so the, 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 actually, you can reduce the proof of. Sorry, you can reduce the study of whether this thing is a current algebra. You can reduce it to the question of whether the Jacobiator is a tensor. So you can show that if it's a tensor, then it's a, then it's good. And that, that thing will not be true if you if you uh, it, it will not be a tensor if 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 this if the stabilizers of the dissection are not quite if this is not a quasi-tropic thing. Okay. Okay. Thank I uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, okay, so yeah, and so now, now I can make one more definition to, to make it some more physics -y. So definition is that uh, two current algebraids, E prime and E double prime are called Poisson Lity dual. Poisson Lity dual. If they are both pullbacks of the same current algebra, if they are both pullbacks, I mean, current algebra pullbacks of some third current algebra E. And uh, so first first thing to say is that there, so, okay, so one example would be to have, example would be that you, you start with, with G, which has two different Lagrangian subalgebras, then you create two you know, then you then you have two exact current algebras which are both pullbacks of the same guy. But uh, the the word duality is maybe a little misleading here because there is no reason in general why you shouldn't have more than just two. You can have like you can have a third one, you know, like fourth one. You can have infinitely many of them. You can have a continuous family. So so some people instead of this they call about poissonality plurality. So the reason it comes from so the, the reason people people of most often say duality is that it kind of gener generalizes the simplest case the, or the original case that people consider was the case when this thing when you could write this thing as a sum as a, so this is a sum in terms of vector, as a vector spaces so if you can decompose the Lie algebra into sum of two such things and this is called money and triple And in this case, there were two obvious choices for this Lagrangian subalgebras. So there was that, that's why, and people were just studying, you know, like one or the other, and that's why they were talking about duality. And and it's and it's well known that this Manian triple they corresponds to Poisson Lie groups. So these both guys here, if you integrate them, then they get a Poisson tensor, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So so that's the reason for the name Poisson Lie duality. It comes from this original example that's that's but, but yeah, as you see, it's, it's, a, it's a much more general phenomenon. You can have just two, it's just two current algebras which are pullbacks of the same thing. And most, most usually require these two things to be exact. You can require them to be transitive. In that case, you would get some interesting statements about heterotic string theory, but usually it's exact. Uh, okay, and, and perhaps uh, more, more physics-y nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The definition of one is triple is you have a quadratic algebra and a pair of Manning pairs. That's it. Uh, no, no, they have to be transfers in Manning triple. Okay, so you have, yeah, yeah, okay. So you have, so but H is the same as before. It's a Lagrangian subalgebra. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So they intersect. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. So, so the condition, yeah, the condition is that you have a, you have, you have two. So yeah, you have two complementary Lagrangian 
some algebras. And in general, it's kind of natural to see this, but there is many examples when they are not transfers. So you can, yeah, so it's, it's not necessary for this construction. But that was the first case people studied. Okay, uh, so yeah, maybe some more physics uh, magic is that, so, so the reason why this is, okay, so, so the reason why people talk about duality in this sense is that if, if, if I now, so let me draw the corresponding picture. So you have you have this current algebra in the middle and now you have these two guys which are, which are pullbacks of that. Um, now what you can do, so, so now, now these two guys on the, on the wings, they are, they are Poissonity, mutually Poissonity dual. Now, now suppose furthermore that these guys on the left and these guys on the right are exact. Okay. The one in the middle you don't want to suppose because it will never be, but like the ones on the wings, they you want. Suppose, suppose that these two guys are exact. For instance, in, in this case of, of, of one in triple, you get that automatically because this thing was exact. So suppose that you have such a setup. And now on top of that, suppose that you pick a generalized metric. So now we bring back the dynamics, the, the extra structure. So suppose now that you have a sub bundle here. We said the generalized metric is the same as a sub bundle with some properties. But, but because now these, these guys on the wings on, on left and right, they can be, they are just pullbacks as vector bundles. Then they inherit a generalized metric as well. You just simply fiberwise induce a generalized metric here. So you will get V plus prime and V plus double prime. And now if you forget about the origin of this thing, and if you just look at this, this bit, then you notice that you have an exact current algebra with a generalized metric. And that by what we said last time, that's the same thing as having a, a, a on, on your base manifold, having a metric and a three form, a closed three form. So this thing induces to you a pair of this, 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 this uh, triple of data. So you have a many, same here, you will have a manifold, a metric, and a closed tree form. Uh, I, I apologize for using H both for closed tree form and for Lie group here, it's a different H. This is a closed tree form. And also, also if you remember from last time, having such a data, having a manifold with a metric and a closed tree form, you can study as, you, you, can, you can use this to, 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 to construct a sigma model. So that is some sort of physical theory. So you, you get one in here and you get one in here. So there is some action functional that you can use to describe the models. And now the non-trivial claim is that these two sigma models will be dual to each other in, in the sense that they will be isomorphic or almost isomorphic. Uh, and if you want to make that more precise, uh, you can say that for instance, so this thing, let me recall what this thing was before. Sorry for, for the rolling, but yeah, it should be somewhere here. Yeah, here. So it, it's a map from some Riemann surface. So it's some, some sort of field theory, classical field theory. And the action uses this, this data, the metric and the tree form. Now, if you have a field theory or just in just any sort of reasonable mechanical system, you can cast it in the Hamiltonian formalism. And if you do that, then basically you end up with some infinite dimensional symplectic manifold the phase space with some Hamiltonian. Uh, and uh, and then you can say that the claim is that these two corresponding if dimensional simplectic manifolds with Hamiltonians, they are isomorphic, like uh, simplectomorphic. And, and, and this thing that I said is almost true, but there, there is some more subtlety in that, but let me not get into that. And what I'm just trying to say is that you can make this more precise. Right. Okay, and, and now to, to make connections with the Ricci, with the Ricci tensor and all these things, you can you can now say the following thing. Let's call it the theorem, even though it's like the proof of that is obvious, uh, but, but but the importance of that is kind of, it's 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 in, it's an interesting statement. And that that thing is just that this generalized Ricci tensor and this generalized curvature they are they are natural with respect to to these pullbacks. So if you take Generalize Ricci for a pulled back metric and a pulled back divergence. Yeah, I, I already told, I, here I told you how to pull back metrics. I didn't tell you how to pull back divergence, but you can, I mean, there is not much. It's the obvious thing that you want to, the divergence of the pullback is the pullback of the divergence. Yeah, something like that. 
So, so divergences can also be pulled back naturally. Then, then you will have this property. Uh, you pass. Where, where the right hand, yeah, you have this thing, and you have the same for this color curvature. And the reason for this, and, and okay, and this is a very simple, simple statement. It, it, it's just it's just a, a simple consequence of the fact that if you look at the definition that we had last time. So again, it's not important what the definition is. It's, it's important that it's that it. What is important is that it's build out of operations which are natural with respect to pullbacks because if you have brackets, and you know that you can definition of a pullback is that if you have bracket of pullback sections, that it's a pullback of the bracket. So if I would put f prime, f, f stars, f stars everywhere, I can basically take them out of every slot and I can I can arrive at the at the theorem below. So, so it's it's just the immediate consequence of the fact how these things were built, right? But the the implication for physics with this yellow slash red picture is that Poisson Lity duality, PLTD, let me call it Poisson Lity duality, is compatible with these string background equations background equations meaning the vanishing of Ricci and vanishing of the scalar curvature that, that we had before this this string background equations so what this means is that if you have if you have such a pair of Poissonly if you have such a Poissonly dual pair and you have some generalized metric in the middle which induces generalized metrics on the left and on the right then if one of them will have vanishing Ricci and vanishing scalar curvature then the one on the right will, will have it as well and simply for the reason that the generalized Ricci and generalized color curvature in the middle will also be zero. You say a word about how do you pull back divergences because the, the, you say that the pullback depends on, on the choice of anchor. So it's not- uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. So here, what I, what I meant here is that uh, I didn't write the, the beginning of the theory. So, so suppose that, that you already have a pullback current algebra. So, so suppose that uh e prime over m prime is a current algebra pullback or, or sorry maybe that was not what you were asking well still i don't see how do you define the pullback divergence okay okay let's see so uh so divergence so if i have such a pullback so you ha i have this map uh e prime M prime here we have F. Uh, then I want to say that if I take a divergence, if I have a divergence here on the right, so div, and I want to define it with something on the left, and I want to define it by the condition that if I pull back a section, say A. Uh, this thing should be a function on the base. So this thing should be the same as a pullback of the of div A, I guess. I guess this is this is the con the, this is the defining condition for it. And this thing defines a unique divergence for all A fictions of E. In, in more generality, you can pull back connections and this kind of, this is somehow a simple version of that. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, I may be confused because if I, if I, okay, so it is true that the pullback bundle can be, is, locally generated by sections which are pulled back. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, so if I have a, another section, I express it locally in terms of these coefficients and then and in terms of this basis or frame. Mm -hmm. And then I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to declare that the 
defining condition for the divergence is satisfied? I mean, yes. the, the condition for the divergence is, is... Okay, I think I see your definition. Okay, okay, it's fine, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so sorry. Yes, 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 so that, that, that that's that's as far that's that's for the first part about pullbacks and Poisson disability, and then there is a second second part of the story which is sort of less known. I mean, people okay, pe people who work with Poisson disability they probably never use these concepts because I mean, in, when they do work in, in the physics language, then they well, first of all, most of them they, most of the time they stick to this simple example, and they really don't need this kind of language, but. But then, using this language, th these statements of compatibility between Poisson and duality and string background equations, it becomes obvious. In in the in, in like these more explicit formulas that most people use, it's it's kind of very mysterious why that should work. And there have been like lots of calculations, people proving that thing. So this, yeah. In, in any case, there is a second there is a second thing that you can do with Courant algebra, and that's called reductions. I mean, there is obviously many things that you can do, but there is these two ones which are related to Poisson duality and equivariant Poisson duality, respectively. So this thing will be related to the second one. So to do that, so suppose that um, so let k be a Lie algebra. With uh, symmetric bilinear. Invariant uh, form. We can call it like concurrent algebra, like recurrent algebra with subscript k. Uh, so it's basically a quadratic algebra, except we don't require the, uh, that this thing is non degenerate. It can be zero, for instance. And now you say that. Uh, a k equivariant current algebra is a current algebra, let's say E, E over M, together with a linear map, linear map, let's call it high, which goes from this Lie algebra to sections of this current algebra. And such that it preserves the bracket and the and the and the uh, and the and the pairing. So such that if you have uh, say chi of a chi of b on e, let me put a subscript e, and it's the same as if you would do uh, a b on k, and the same for the pairing. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a number. Yeah, so you want this to be the same as this one. So you want in particular this to be constant. Um, okay. So now notice that if you have such a thing, then this thing induces a uh, induces a. So this is the end of the definition. Now this induces an action of k of the Lie algebra k on e and on m so uh, so for instance the action on m will will be simply by applying the anchor so you, you know you, you go here and then you compose with this this thing with anchor and you get a vector field on the base manifold and uh, right so now if if uh, so if this this map sorry if this if this action integrates if this integrates to an action of, of some overly group integrates to an action 
or some corresponding, let's say, connected Lie group, connected Lie group capital K. We, we say that it's K equivalent with capital K. Uh, we say it is K equivalent. Okay, and now the reason for introducing such a notion is that you can do reductions of such things. So let me describe it as a procedure. So reduction of a, um, okay, sorry. Let me suppose now, suppose, so suppose that we have a K equivariant. So suppose E is K equivariant. And the action, uh, the corresponding action on the base is free and proper. And then we can define a new current algebra. Right? Then we define a uh, quotient by k as follows. Okay, now I, I will be I will be more descriptive. So. So first thing that you need to do is that you need to, so if you have, okay. So you, so first you take a, a sub bundle, let's call it chi of fk. So this is a sub bundle of E, which is, which is, which is generated by, by, by these sections, like point wise, like at, every, at each point, at each, at each, at each point, this should be, uh, at each point, this should be, the the span i mean sorry the, at each point this should be the image of this action at that point so so basically you take all these sections in here and then you take there's there, there's like the sub bundle that they generate and uh, yeah and now what you do you take the the orthogonal complement to that which is now again a sub bundle of e but then you take a quotient of that thing by it a smaller sub bundle which will be given by the image of kernel of this pairing on k okay so it looks a little complicated <laughs> admittedly so 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 what i mean here is that in, for instance if this pairing here was zero then then this thing would be the entire k so then you take you, you, you take kind of chi of k perp mod chi of k if this would be everything then Sorry, if this, if this pairing would be not non-degenerate, then it has a zero kernel, and then this you can forget about the denominator. Okay, it's just some uh, annoying thing that you have to put in there so that stuff is well defined. Now, now this thing you can see it as a bundle over M. And now the final step, final difficulty in here is that now we take a quotient of of the action of K. So we take a quotient here on the I don't know, it's probably terrible. Notation, but okay, let me let's take a question of this and get a so that you have this bundle and then take a quotient of that by k because this thing will still carry an action of k. And the claim is that this this nonsense will be again a uh, current algebra. So this has a well defined and kind of like the current algebra structure on E descends to a current algebra structure on this on this weird thing which we can call E what slash k. E quotient by K. So if you see it for the first time, then there is, I guess there is no point in trying to remember the, the steps of the construction. The, the point is that you can do some sort of reduction. And if you look at it, then it, 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 it happens in several steps. So it's not like you would just mod out. You take a subspace, for instance, here, you take a subspace, and then you then you take quotient. So, so if, if you if, if you know about symplectic geometry, then this reminds you a little bit of a this, this might remind you of a symplectic quotient, or like uh, Marsden Weinstein quotient or uh, Hamiltonian reduction, um, because there you do a similar thing that you take like you take a subspace and then you take a quotient, or you take a quotient and then you take a subspace. Hopefully, I'm correct. And, and the, the re yeah, yeah, go on, please. Can you see what do you mean by k equivariant? Say again? Yeah. When you say if this integrates to an action, mm -hmm. to the action of a connected group, what, what do you mean to integrate this equation? Ah, uh, I mean that it, 
that there is an action of the of the so so first of all I take a group which has the Lie algebra k. Yeah. I take a a connected Lie algebra uh, which corresponds to the algebra small, small k, and then I say that there is a then I want to have an action of the group whose infinitesimal action is given by this given Lie algebra action. Yeah, but you need you need something, right? And as as you have, I mean, I guess you're like contracting with the with the Dorfman bracket to to get symmetries, and then. Um, say again, sorry, I, I'm not sure what your your that. your map chi mm -hmm. is not going to automorphisms of e; it's going to the sections of e, and then you need yes. to Yes. Oh, uh, you are okay. You are you are you are worried about this bit. Like, how does this becomes an? How does this correspond to an action of the algebra on e? Right? Is that the? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to know if you. Mean yeah. 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 Right. Right. So I, I tried to hide this thing so that no one would notice it, but you noticed. So so good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's. Um, I mean, assuming that I understand, which means there, there is a there is a there is a thing which I try to go on rack under the carpet and that's the thing that if you have a if you have a general Courant algebra or in fact it's enough to have just a Leibniz algebra I guess so if you have a e is a Courant algebra and you have a section let's say a of e then this thing induces a vector then this thing gives rise to a vector field let's say I don't know uh, capital X subscript a uh, which is a vector field on the total space of, of the Courant algebra um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of a useful useful thing to know because then then basically what the axioms tell you that is, the axioms tell you that or most of the axioms of Courant algebra they they, told, they say that this vector field preserves all the structure. And now the the way to construct this vector field is that um, uh, how does this go? Uh, so you have a, a Courant algebra. Let's say vector bundle. You have some base. So this is a vector field such that it, pro it projects down to the anchor of of A, which is a vector field on the base. So it's some it's some vector field which so this is the row of A, and there is a vector field here which lifts this thing, and it's it's basically the vector field that generates the bracketing with that thing. So if, if you if you are in in a, in in a point, say here, and you want to know where the arrow goes. And what you do is that you take an arbitrary section passing through that point. Let's call it B. And then uh, you take take what you take B plus yeah you take B plus epsilon bracket with A. So you get something like this. Probably there's a better description, but this is the one that I that I know. Uh, so you, you take so you consider such a such a class of sections, and then and then and then what? And then you look at yeah, and then you look at the sections which go yeah. So this this will give you some class of sections, but not, but you're interested in getting a curve because you want to have a vector field, so you want to have a curve, and the curve will be given by by simply taking the the, the the like taking this section above this above this vector you know above the flow of this vector field yeah this pro I'm probably making it you know unnecessarily complicated <laughs> so sorry for that um, but yeah so yeah so I mean it's the vector field that kind of generates the the yeah. Okay. I, I, maybe maybe I can say it like this. So if it's 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 a vector field such that if you take a uh, say infinitesimal flow of that vector field along that vector field, it's it's the thing that translates any section into into this section. So so infinitesimal like translations along that vector along the flow of the vector field of a given section will correspond to the adding a bracket with a. Of that section. So it's it's in a sense it's something that generates the bracket. Is that can you go back to the to the formula of the reduction? Yes, um, just to see. Uh, yeah.
So you're taking. You, you mean this this gray thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is this, As, uh, mm -hmm. is, is this the same? I guess this is the same sort of construction that the bursting Cavalcanti Gualtieri called. I think right? so. I think so. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know this from Powell, but I think that's the, it should coincide with that one. Well, yeah, I think they do it in a slightly more general setup. Because okay. So, right. Yes. So, so actually, the. the they define so, Dorfman, Dorfman algebras. It's like, I mean, you, you don't necessarily have a Lie algebra, you have something. Mm -hmm. Or the Lie algebra, which maps into the sections of it, something like that. I see, I see. Uh huh. Right. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. Thanks for the comment. Uh, yeah. So in, in fact, the, the kind of an arguably better way of looking at this, uh, which doesn't need you to remember this kind of ugly construction, is to really see it as a symplectic reduction. So you can you can if you if you pass to the language of graded symplectic manifolds, uh, then then this thing really corresponds to a symplectic reduction. Like to, or with respect to okay, we, you have to like a DG symplectic reduction or something, but like it, it, it's really the analog of that. And that explains that why you have to do it in like more 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 steps that you are taking quotient and reduct and subspaces. Um yeah but but for, for now let me just let me just stop here and uh let me say I mean let me say the following oh yeah the following note uh, then Looking at these formulas, what you can show that if this if this bracket on this on this auxiliary Lie algebra is zero, so if we said that that doesn't have to be non-degenerate. So if it's zero, and this E is exact, then then also the quotient will be exact, and also E not K is exact. So that's kind of an interesting thing to know, and then. Then, there is, then you can what you can look at is you can try to combine uh, you can try to see when when over a given base there is a there is a exact algebra which is also equivariant so so let me put that as a theorem um, so suppose that you have let p be a be a principal be a principal g bundle so this is total space of a principal g bundle principal g bundle where G is some Lie group uh, for with whose Lie algebra has an invariant pairing, so it's quadratic. So G G a quadratic Lie algebra. The claim is that uh, then then G equivariant. So then, then you can ask because if you have a G equivalent current algebra, it induces an action of the of the Lie algebra or of the group on the base. So now suppose that you already start with such an action, that's namely this principle, this free and proper action. So you have you have your on your manifold on your base manifold, you already have an action. That's that's what I mean by this principle G bundle. And then you are now trying to see if there is a current algebra over that thing, over this over this total space of this principle G bundle. Uh, if there is a current algebra which is exact and which is equivariant such that the corresponding action on the base is this one so then the g equivariant exact current algebra over over p exists if and only if the first pontiac in class of that bundle is zero And in case they exist, then you can also say how, like, that they, they form a torsor over something, but it may not go into that. So it's not unique in particular. But but you need this vanishing of the first Pontryagin class. And, class. and uh, this thing actually shows a nice thing in connection to the previous thing. It it it, it, it actually allows you to create many examples of these Poisson lead pairs. So uh, so suppose now that you have such a principal bundle, so that you have again this P. But suppose, in addition, that you have a Lagrangian subalgebra of this Lie algebra G, just as before. 
just as before when we discussed this post-nominated duality. So if you have such a thing, then what you can do, you can you can take you can take this this equivariant exact current algebra. Let me call it E. Okay, E. Okay, so I'm supposing, sorry, I'm supposing again that I have a principal G bundle with a vanishing first point tag in class. Okay, ah, sorry, I did not invite it. So suppose P is a principal G bundle uh, with vanishing first point tag in class. And, uh, and E is this equivalent exact current algebra. It's is, is, is the corresponding uh, G equivariant exact current algebra. Okay, so suppose that you have this, and on top of it, you also have a Lagrangian Lisa algebra. Then I want to create now. I want to create something that is similar to this 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 uh, this thing here. So instead of the algebra over point, what I will do, I will simply take the quotient. Uh, yeah, so I, I had this E over P, and now I take a quotient of that with respect to this big group G. I, I take the reduction, sorry, the reduction in, this, in the sense above. So I, I obtain a new current algebra over a new base. And now I can do the same thing, but I can do it with respect to this smaller group, this H. We can take P mod H over E mod H. So I will, and, and yeah, and clearly there is a map like this because here I'm modding out by a bigger group. So I have a map like this. It's, 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 it's a surjective, sub, sorry, it's a surjective submersion. And uh, yeah, I'm just claiming that this thing that, that you get here is a pullback current algebra. And now again, simply counting dimensions, you can show that this is exact. Uh, yeah, sorry, you don't even need that. Sorry, that, that follows from from this note here, because because the original one, this thing was exact, is E, and you are modding it out by by H, but H is Lagrangian, which means it has a zero inner product, zero pairing. So by this note, this is exact. This this thing is exact, and by this way, you can create many many such pullbacks, and you get many examples of this Poisson Lie duality. In this context, it will be called Poisson Lie duality with spectators because this thing, this this manifold in here, this is called the manifold of spectators. The idea is that if you would have a different, you know, if you would have a different pair, blah blah blah, then kind of this this these are the guys that are that are common to all both these dual setups because. This thing is this, but something extra. So, so this this is this is the stuff that, that that is present in all these dual theories. That's why it's called spectators because they just sit and spectate. I guess they're just like they're present in. They don't care about the duality. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah, so this was a remark, and uh, okay, I'm getting to the to the end. Uh -huh. Okay, so now, now the corresponding the corresponding physical phenomenon related to this. So before it was Poisson Lie duality. Yeah, yeah, go, go on. Can you can you say something about the proof of this term you stated? I mean, uh, you about need the, <clears throat> the one that of the first point in plus equals to zero. Do you need this? Uh, I don't just, remember. The proof. Do you need this? Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Just, uh, just say that again. Sorry, because it was interrupted a little bit in my in my phones. Yeah. If you can briefly say something about the proof of the theorem about the first point in class vanishing, do, do, I don't remember the proof right now. Is it, do you need the? I mean, is this true at the infinitesimal level, or do you need to impose that the, it integrates? I mean, the action integrates to a group. Okay. Oh, uh, good question. Sorry, let me check. Let me check this this thing that we're, where I, where I have it from. Uh... Yeah. Um. Oh yes, you're right. It it's yeah. It, it's a capital G in here. Yeah. yeah. 
remember by it. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, uh, yeah. So I have to be capital here. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. I. I yeah. Oh, I. I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just, just now to to end this 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 stage. I uh, just wanted to say something about what people call dressing corsets. It's my understanding that this is how the subject is known in the literature, because the dressing is something related to this theory of these Poissonnet groups. But anyway, uh, it's we call in article we call it equivalent Poissonnet duality, which we find a fit, more fitting name. Equivariant Poisson Lee duality. And that's that's related to the story as follows. So suppose again that we are given two pullbacks. So now this this is yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so you have two two pullbacks. So these are three current algebra, and also you suppose that these ones on the on the left and on the right are exact, just as before. So for instance, one's coming from this construction if you take two different Lagrangian subalgebras. But now on top of that, you assume that the, this thing is, is equivalent with respect to some uh, suitable algebra, which I don't want to call it G because, okay, so let me call it S. It's, it's, it's probably a very non-standard name to call a group S, but let me still do that. So, so this, is a, this is a S equivariant, where this S is a thing which has a zero inner product. So I assume the zero inner product is vanishing. Is, sorry, this, this associated non-degenerate bilinear form is trivial. So I have just the diagram as before, but I also assume that there is some, uh, this, is, this is equivalent. Now, uh, under some mild, well, under some technical conditions, which I'm now skipping because this is the end of this section. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, oh, oh, both these things become equivariant. So now this thing, this thing makes also this equivariant and this other one as well. And then you can do the reduction. So you will get this E prime over S and here you will get this E double prime over S. But because this thing has, has a zero inner product and these guys were exact, these two things will be again exact. And so now you have two exact current algebra over some smaller base. So this is over M prime mod S, and this is over M double prime over S, and they're exact. And now you can play the same game as before. So now if you if you if you put a generalized metric here, then it induces generalized metrics here and here. And if you assume that this was somehow invariant under this group. You can what you can do you can again uh, you can reduce this thing descends to a generalized metric here so you will have some generalized metric i don't know how many primes i should put here uh sorry this was one prime this was two primes and this is i don't know two primes this slash or something the, the the option is that there is there is just a general that at the end you get a again a exact ground algebra with the generalized metric which is again you can translate it it's the same as having this manifold with a metric in a three form. And the same here. So here I'm skipping over some details. Yeah, probably. Yeah, this here is not how I mentioned. It. Never mind, sorry. <laughs> but let me skip the details just to give you an idea. So the idea is that again you get a sort of you get two different things, you can build two different sigma models, and the claim is that they again will be somehow dual to each other. And and on a similar note, you can you can also prove that let me now reach the maximal level of vagueness and just say that this generalized Ricci and the scalar curvature are compatible with these reductions. The reductions. Which physically means that if you have these two dual models, then if one of them has vanishing Ricci and color curvature, then the other one does as well, etc. Statements like this. So this is what we proved in the paper. This this was kind of the original starting point of the whole investigation. But yeah, it's uh, as you see, it's technically more involved because it involves both pullbacks and reductions. So one has to talk about both of them to introduce them. And, 
But, but the, 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 the advantage of this dressing cosets or this equivalent Poisson inequality is that it kind of gives you a class of dual models, which is much, much wider than, the, than just the ordinary one. The ordinary, sorry, the case of, of this Poisson Lee dual things. And I feel that it is, it is like very underrepresented in the literature because most people just study this ordinary Poisson inequality while this thing allows you to do much more things. So for instance, in this, um, yeah, because basically you are, you are if, if, this, if this red diagram in the middle came from this Poisson Lee, sorry, it came, it came from these Manin pairs, Manin triples, then ha having an extra equivalence here would mean that, that not only this is a quotient, but this is like yet another quotient. So here, the space, the space here would, would be G mod H in this case of Manin pairs. In here, it would be G mod H and then further modding out by something. So we see that the space of manifolds that you get is much larger. It's not just like group modulo Lagrangian subgroup, but it can be like much larger setup. And in, and in the, one of the upshots of this work that we did was that we found some new solutions to supergravity equations on generalized supergravity equations for on, on, on symmetric spaces. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but I would end this part with equivalent possibility here, and then in the remaining minutes, maybe the questions. But then I would then I would go to to briefly talk about this generating Dirac operators and uh, type two supergravity. If that's fine. Yeah, it's fine with me. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let me let me take the last section. Type two supergravity. So, so maybe the phys physical motivation is that, okay, suppose that for one or another reason that we take, consider 10 dimensional manifolds, this, 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 this is not essential, but it will just result to some extra signs or whatever. So this is, I mean, this is the one that physicists are interested in. Um, so, so in studying super strength theories or their low energy limits, which are these super gravities, then, then these theories describe some, some some fields. So we, we were talking about the metric, the three form field, and the, the scalar field. Now in type two B in type two supergravity, you get an extra stuff. You also get extra stuff for other string theories, namely for heterotic and type one, you would get a gauge field. But you can do that, you can you can encode, you can put the gauge field actually together with these things and put them together as a generalized metric on a, on a suitable transitive current algebra. So that's that's one that's one way how you can use Kuranda algebra in the study of not just the, the thing I outlined about, but also to like go to heterotic string. But here I will do something else. I will instead of this, I will do something slightly more unnatural. So I will not I will not use I will no, I will add extra fields which we cannot call F, and I will not put them inside generalized metrics. So that I will put it as an extra datum. So these things are called Ramon Ramon fields and okay, I will write. Ramon Ramon. It's, it's the same guy, uh, but you know, did you know had, had a great contribution, so they named it twice after him. No, so so you know, I mean, the, okay, so now the, the, there is of course a reason why it's called like that because it comes from. Anyway, yeah, let's move on. Um, so what it is, it's, it's, a, it's a collection of, of inhomogeneous differential forms, which are either purely even or odd on the manifold M. Uh, so this is on some manifold M and they're either purely even or purely odd and these things correspond to what is called type 2A and 2B. Hopefully I am not missing it. Yeah, so this is type 2A and this is type 2B. But in fact, they contain too much information. So you want to cut it, cut it down by two. So you impose that this is a self-dual thing. This makes writing down the action function a little bit tricky, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so this is the metric with respect. To, so this is the hot star with respect to G. So this thing tells you that, for instance, the one form part of this is related to the nine form part is the dual of the nine form, etc. So basically it tells you, it tells you that you're only, only interested in, 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 in uh, if you are in 10 dimensions, in forms up to dimension five, the rest you can calculate with the one caveat that caveat that if you have a five form field, it has to be self-dual. 
Okay, but anyway, it has this constraint, and furthermore, it has to satisfy some differential constraint, which 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 can be written as d plus h wedge on on this f has to be zero. Okay, so this is a differential operator of inhomogeneous de degree. So you, you take the dif there are differential, and then you take plus wedging with this three form. And yeah, so that, that's what it is physically. Um, so now in order to put this thing, now in order to prove some compatibilities of these things with Poisson duality and some interesting stuff, it, it's desirable to put this in a more current like framework. So the question is like how to encode these things in, in, in terms of current algebra. So, so first, first thing, these guys here, like how to see differential forms in terms of current algebra. So, so these three fields, uh, these three fields, I, I told you before, or, or at least these two fields can be seen as, as uh, a generalized metric on an exact current algebra. So we want to do everything on exact current algebra. And for an exact current algebra, which we know is locally of this form, or sorry, it's, 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 it's non-canonically of this form Tm plus T star M, if you take the, uh, okay, um, okay, let's, so let's go one step back. Sorry. The, the claim I want to make is that this F, like in more general setup, the more abstract, more current like setup, these things should be seen as sections of F being spinner half densities. So half densities, I denoted them before by H because they form a Hilbert space. And now I think this times spinners. And when I say spinners, I mean spinners with respect to current algebra. So here it is like current algebra E over M. That's that's like you assume that you have something like that. And uh, now I, here I take spinners with respect to to E. So E has a pairing. So it's a bundle with a fiberwise pairing. So you can you can construct the Clifford bundle. You can construct the, the spinner representations. So that's what we that's what we do here. So we have some spinner bundle. And then F is a section of these things. Sorry, well, maybe I should say section. Maybe I shouldn't have written it like this, but okay. Uh, I, I, it's, 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 a, it's a section of the pro product of the spinner bundle and of the bundle of half densities. And because these spinners in 10 dimensions, they, they split into two classes, like into two irreducibles, they have two different chiralities. So these chiralities will correspond to this even and odd. Um, so yeah, so of definite chirality. So this is how we deal with these Ramon Ramon fields, and, and uh, crucially, crucially on a on a on a exact current algebra, uh, half densities. So if if um, okay, so if E is exact. Which means that you can non-canonically associate it with T M plus T star M. Uh, then, if you look, if you if you if you look at what the corresponding bundle like this is, then this is precisely the differential forms on on M. It's a, like a well-known fact that if you want to construct a spinner representation of of a space which looks like this. Then, okay, maybe I'll be right. It's, if you have a vector space like this, then it's a sum of v, v and it, it's dual. This is your vector space. And it ha this has a pairing, which is just given by, by, by pairing forms and vectors. Then the corresponding spinner representation is a canonical one, which is given by. Uh, Okay, sorry, I'm, I think I'm making this more confusing. Okay, I wanted to say, okay, what I wanted to say is that you can take these things and you can take, you can take, uh, so this is, this is the spinners and you can take this original space, act on it by this thing acts by contraction and this thing acts by wedging. So there is a, that's kind of standard construction. Uh, what I wanted to do, but I, I guess I got myself into a mess here, but I wanted to, to, uh, to, to, to show how these half densities actually come about, but okay, let me not do that. You can answer that as a, as a question. I, I can say it later. Uh, 
yeah so, super you just have to trust me that like the these things in order to have this thing is not enough to just have spinners you have to have really spinner half density so spinner half density is on the nose reco they recover these these differential forms so that's good so we know that uh, these f's are sections of spinner half densities now the the biggest question is what is this operator here so in terms of coolant algebra it should be something that acts on spinner half densities and indeed there is a one thing which is called the generating Dirac operator. That's that's kind of a canonical thing. So generating Dirac. Generating Dirac operator. So generating Dirac operator is an operator that acts on spinner half densities. That's D acts on spinner half densities. The sections of the spinner bundle tensor is half density bundle. And it's canonical. It's canonically associated to a current algebra. It doesn't need any generalized metric or any, any extra structure. It's just, it's just unique. And, um, and now, okay. So maybe a question for the audience. How, how much time do I have? <laughs> it's like five or 10 minutes or? Uh, at least, yeah. Uh, okay, good, okay. I suppose. Okay. Okay. Then I, I will try to be concise, but okay. So, 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 okay. I can, I can give you directly how this operator looks like, and I can also tell you why it looks like that. So let me maybe tell you how it looks like first. So, so suppose that you have a current algebra E over M and suppose that you pick a local trivialization. Okay. So, so in this explicit form, I will use a local trivialization. Uh, so suppose that you know locally you write this E as some vector space. Let's say B. I guess I haven't used B. Okay, V times M. And suppose that I do this in a way that uh, I mean I, I want this to respect the inner product. So I will uh, how to say that. So okay, let me let me say it like this. That I pick I pick a set of orthonormal frames to so pick set E alpha of orthonormal frames. Okay, here orthonormal, I mean that their inner product is plus or minus one because you can have inner product of weird signature. Okay, so so, so having such a set, this, this basically gives me an identification of E locally. This is a local thing that I said about. Locally get a, get a trivialization by this set of orthonormal frames. So we can write bundle as some vector space times M and this E alpha, you can see them as basis of this vector space. Okay, um, very good. So now this direct generating operator will look as follows. So, Like this, where where first of all this curly L is the lead derivative. Uh, indices are lowered and raised using the metric of the current algebra, of the of the canonical pairing. And this C alpha beta gamma is by definition the inner product of C alpha, C, sorry, of E alpha, E beta, and E gamma. So these three sections. So this thing will be, this is, these are the structure functions of the current algebra. And when I say, and this product here, this is, this is, this is a product in Clifford, in the in Clifford algebra. So, so this E, um, yeah. So, so basically this thing you can see this is like an element living in, in Clifford V, Clifford algebra corresponding to this V tensor. Uh, I don't know, differential operators on half densities. I don't know how to say that, maybe D one half or something. It's a section of that. Oh, whatever. <clears throat> yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so 
so this is how it looks like uh, anyway in, in like uh, if you write it down explicitly and now the reason it exists okay so the claim is that this is independent of the of all the choices that i made namely of this trivialization and the reason for that is that there is a there is a more abstract characterization of such a thing and that that kind of one of the most beautiful things in here this subject i think uh and that goes as follows so so forget about everything that was set up to, until now and uh, let, let me talk about some slightly maybe for some people more mysterious connections there is a connection between current there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between current algebra and something that's called nq symplectic manifolds let's say with degree of sympathetic form being two um so what this what this thing means is that let me explain it one by one. So n here means that n manifolds in this context, it means that it, 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 it's, okay, there's various ways to define it, but you, you, can, you can, roughly speaking, it's, 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 a, it's a space on which the algebra of functions is, is, grade, is graded commutative. So it means that, for instance, locally, if you pick coordinates, it means that you will have coordinates which have various degrees and functions are basically polynomials in these coordinates. There is, a, there, is a, there is, of course, a formal way how to define this. You can define it as a, as a, as a super manifold, which is a well-defined concept with some extra action of some, some group. But yeah, like for, for, for picture, what you should really imagine is that you have some, some manifold, like would be manifold. It's not, I mean, it's formally, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a space with a sheaf. With a sheaf of algebras, and you treat this sheaf of algebra, you treat this sheaf of algebras as, as functions on your space. So you have some curly M such that this curly M is 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 a graded algebra, graded commutative, uh, graded commutative, and this N means non-negatively graded. So it, it's it basically this this thing is N N graded, including zero. Okay. Uh, so this Q means that there is a there is a there is a vector field. So there exists a vector field Q on this on this manifold. Again, more abstractly, it would be a derivation of this algebra of functions. It's a vector field which squares to which is of degree one. So it, if it if it acts on a function, it increases the degree by one, and which squares to zero. That's what this NQ means. Symplectic means that there is a symplectic form that, that it kind of straightforward the generalizes from ordinary geometry. There is a symplectic form which you require to be compatible with Q. So you want to have a symplectic form such that Q is symplectic vector field. This thing is zero. And uh, yeah, and this degree two, this now doesn't refer to the degree of the form, but it, it refers to the fact that. Um, the underlying so having having a graded manifold and the one different way to, to talk about it is, is to say that you have a vector field which is called Euler vector field Euler vector field and which acts on functions by returning their degree so if f is a function of definite degree then this vector field the action of this vector field is defined by saying that if it acts on f it returns the degree and in, in it, with that language, this 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 condition is just saying that the lead derivative of omega with respect to e spits out the vector two. Okay, so one way or another, there is a there is a different way of saying what a current algebra is. And as you see, this is quite concise. Of course, I had to explain what these notions are, but but at least all the all the axioms of current algebra they basically follow from either either this condition or or from the whole construction. And uh, one great thing about these graded symplectic manifolds, which stuff with, with things of this form, is that uh, all differential forms of non-zero degree are actually, uh, sorry, or closed differential forms actually exact. So, so in particular, in this framework, you can you can prove this like a neat proof that you can show that this this Q. It's actually Hamiltonian. So this Q is always Hamiltonian in this framework. It means that it there exists a function, 
let's call it theta. Normally it's called H, but we had enough H's already. So let's say theta. So there is a theta I function on this curly manifold, on this curly M, such that uh, usual condition that if you if you insert Q in omega, you get D of this theta. And if you count the degrees, then this thing has to be of actually of degree three. Degree three. Okay. Okay, so now now I wonder, sorry, can I just ask? I mean, yeah, yeah. like a, a simple example of of this correspondence, like say like for S3 where the where the three form class of the current algebra is not zero. Like what's the NQ space that you get? Um, like, like what is script M? And... Yeah, yeah, okay, so, 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 right. So yes, I didn't, I didn't say what, what the arrows are, right? Like how to get here. So yeah, uh, so, so if, if you, if you, if you, okay, so suppose that you, that you, that you trivialize locally the thing, you, just as before you write this thing as B times M, then the corresponding thing here would be T star shifted by two of M times V shifted by one. So this shift means that you, you shift, you take, take this vector bundle and you shift the fiber coordinates to have degree two. So if this E, sorry, if this thing had some coordinates XI and this thing had some E, E alpha, some, coordinate, some linear coordinates E alpha on the fibers, then this would mean that the corresponding current algebra, it, it has, it has three types of coordinates. It has axes here, which are of degree zero, because there's no shift. It has E alphas, which are now seen of, as being of degree one. And then it has some extra uh, cotangent co coordinates, which will be called PI, and they are of degree two now because of this shift. So, so it's something, I mean, it's not like, it's, you, you cannot, it's not canonical. If you have a given current algebra, that is not like a, you say that it's just that shifted by something, that would be too simple. Um, um, but yeah, you, you have to either use it in terms of trivialization or with some other fancy methods, I guess. But as a space, you, you, should, you should really imagine, like given, given a current algebra, you should really imagine that you take the, 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 the base coordinates, you keep them as being coordinates of degree zero. The coordinates of degree one will be the, will correspond to the fibers. Uh, and uh, there is, there have to be some extra coordinates of degree two, which kind of sort of comes for, come for the right. Um, is this what you were asking? <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you, you were also interested in how the flux and all these things get, get into it, right? Well, I mean, for instance, yeah. And like, what is the symplectic form? Is it like, the canonical symplectic form on T star or something? Yes, yeah, yeah. So here, the, yes. So in this, uh, yeah. Here on this, it's a, it, it, sorry. Here, this would be a sum of a simple, of the canonical symplectic form here. So the canonical one. And on this bit, you have a symplectic form which comes from the pairing on V. So pairing on V is a, is a I mean, symplectic form in odd, in, 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 in odd direction is symmetric. So it corresponds to the pairing. So this would be the plus the pairing on, on V. The, probably I should have written it in coordinates that it's dp, dp dx plus let's say g alpha beta de alpha de beta if g sorry if g alpha beta are uh, inner products of these guys where e alpha with lower alpha are some sections some frame Okay. And uh, yeah, and and the the symplectic sorry, and the and the and the re, and the rest of the data because I didn't tell you what Q is. That's kind of the, the point. Uh, the point is that it's better than talking about Q. Is it's it, sorry? It, it's easier to talk about this Hamiltonian function. In this case, it would be in, if I if I if I if I just just finish some something uh, here that if you have a yeah, so if you have a function of degree three. Or actually, no, no, actually, let me connect these two things. So, yeah, so let me just write the most general fu function of degree three that you can have. And you will see that it encodes the, the, the rest of the data. Excuse me. Uh, so function of degree three should be something that, it should be an element of this algebra generated by these coordinates and it should be a degree three. So 
So how to get something of degree three out of this? You can either put two, one P and one E, and then arbitrary many axes in front. So you can say that you will have some coefficients which depend on X and they will have to carry these indices. So this is how you encode the anchor map. But then you can also get, another way to get the degree three is to put three guys of this form. So that would be, you know, having E alpha, E beta, E gamma, with some coefficient functions, and this would be the structure coefficients of the current algebra. And conventionally, there should be, I think, minus one over six or something. So, so the thing I wrote down is the most general function of degree three written down in some local coordinate charts of this gradient manifold. And you see that it, it's parameterized by these two objects. And the, my, and, and the claim is that these, these correspond to the, this, this is the anchor map. And this is, this is the anchor map, and this is the structure <coughs> functions of the current algebra. Let's see. So, so in, in case when the current algebra is actually exact, okay, small remark. So if it is exact, then instead of one, of just having one type of fiber coordinates, you have two, because you have T plus T star. So these E alphas, they actually will, they will be of two types. There will be, some say xi, xi i, and some pi i. Uh, and so in this case, you would you would have four coordinates, so it's like more messy to write stuff up, but, but you can show that uh, you, like the exact current algebra it corresponds to taking, and now I need to think uh, pi xi, I guess this one, maybe one over six, and oh, sorry, theta. Usually it's called h, that's why I sometimes, uh, and here you would have the the H flux, and I guess xi, 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 xi. So so basically the claim is that you, you can show that if you have an exact current algebra, it, then for the corresponding graded symplectic manifold, probably you can always pick coordinates such that it has this form. So so this this just says that the anchor is is the standard anchor, and and yeah, and this is a twist with structure coefficients. Yeah, sorry, this, this was very this was very fast, but maybe just to close the whole thing, let, let me let me say how this connects to this generating Dirac operator. Because now if you if you look at if you look at this expression here and you compare it to the form of the Dirac operator, then you notice that they are very similar. Uh, where was it? Here. So yeah, in, in, indeed if, if instead of Instead of saying this was this was that, if I could maybe have written this in terms of uh, okay, whatever. Yeah, it, they, they they really seem very similar, and uh, and a more formal way of of, of saying that is to say that if you have if you have this you have this graded uh, you have this graded al graded commutative algebra, and that algebra has a Poisson is it, it, it's a graded it's a graded Poisson algebra. It has a Poisson vector given by this symplectic form. So it's a graded Poisson manifold. Uh, sorry, graded Poisson algebra. So okay. write it down. This thing is a graded Poisson algebra. And having such a thing, you can you can quantize this. You can you can because it's 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 actually easier than to quantize an arbitrary Poisson manifold, but like there is a, there is a notion of having a deformation quantization of such an object. So basically, you can you can form a uh, instead of taking this gradient thing, you can you can form a a uh, filter sorry filtered associative algebra. So filtered uh, associative algebra. And you recover the original one as the associated gradients of that of that thing. So you, you want to you want to create a filtered associative algebra, which for, furthermore, if you take like product of two things, let's say A and B, and you take the in this okay, you take the, the commutator of them in this in this algebra, then that thing should I think this should recover the well, there was some brackets. Maybe some higher order terms. I'm not sure. Okay, whatever. Something like this. 
I don't know. If you know about the ordinary deformation quantization, this is this is just a slight upgrade of that. You you have some grading in the game, and uh, yeah, and then the, then you can prove a theorem that this thing. First of all, this thing you can locally associate, uh, associate with, with. Sorry, you can locally identify this thing with with uh, Clifford. Sorry, with with. With differential operators with of with differential operators on half densities with coefficients in Clifford algebra. So precisely this this type of thing. And uh, yeah, and, and and then you can show that there is precisely assuming some self-adjointness and stuff like this, you can there is a unique lift of this function theta into this filter associated with algebra, and that's given by this direct generating operator. Yeah, <clears throat> sorry, this was even <laughs> more sketchy than I intended. But yeah, so so the, the option is that you can recover the like the, the motto, the slogan is that you can re, you can get the generating Dirac operator using a deformation as, as using a quantization as a quantization of this Hamilton of this of this Hamiltonian function in this graded simplex language. And uh, yeah, so that's that's that's. Yeah, sorry. I, here I had, to, I had to skip a lot of details, but uh, you can find more details in the, in the in our article, which is on the first page of this of this of this text, this PDF. And um, yeah, so so this is how you can encode the this thing. You can just say that it is clearly the acting in here because yeah, I, as I didn't say, uh, if you now take on an exact current algebra, it, this theta can be seen as having this form. And now, uh, now performing this this lift, you you can see that the generating Dirac operator for an exact current algebra it will look precisely like this, or maybe with a minus. I never know. So it, it's precisely that operator above. Yeah, and there is also a way how to say this more current, more in a more current way. And yeah, and this is how we can how you can write down the, the equations of motion for type two supergravity. And since you cast everything in a current algebra framework, it immediately it immediately follows that these type two equations are compatible with Poisson Lee T duality. And also it also give this whole framework gives you a machinery of like how to come up with new solutions, which is what we did. And uh, and yeah, let me not talk about that because that's that's kind of more technical. Um, but yeah. Yeah, basically what we did, we found some solutions on symmetric spaces. That's 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 the approach. So if anyone is interested, they can they can ask. Sorry. And so yeah, thank, thanks again for listening, even even though it went slightly over time again. Oh yeah, yeah. Thanks, Fraser. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I tell you, what, maybe uh, well here, let, maybe 